So I've never really been a big fan of sports watches like Garmin, Suntos, Coros, whatever you name it, because I just think that they're just pretty much glorified sport watches and they try very hard to be smart watches at times. But after using the Sunto Pick 9 Pro for a month already, I kind of appreciate what it actually does and I'm actually loving it over my Apple Watch. Now you might be wondering why do I love this piece of gear over any other sport watches or smart watches? Well, let's start off with the design. Now, even though it has a really thick bezel on the display that makes it look like a 10 year old watch or a Casio or whatsoever, it is actually a pretty lightweight watch to wear. So once you put it on your wrist, especially I have medium sized Asian wrist just like this, it actually feels extremely comfortable, way more than any other sport watches and smart watches that I've worn previously. It uses 22 millimeter silicone straps, which you can switch up really easily if you want to, but I really do not find the need to switch it up because it feels very comfortable to wear even when I wear it to sleep. The watch has three physical buttons on the right that feels very nice and clicky to press on and right at the bottom you get your usual blood oxygen and heart rate sensor as well as two pins for connecting to the charger. Now let's take a look at the features of the Suunto Pick 9 Pro. Now this is my favorite watch face so far because it shows quite a bit of information. It has uh, my total workout for the day, my altitude and I can even show the battery life by just tapping it if I want to and there's the date as well as the steps that I have taken for the day. So I've walked about 1700 steps which is still not too bad since I just started the day and I just wore the watch. Now let's check out uh, some of the features here. So when you swipe down on the watch face here, you basically get shortcuts to your workouts here and there are over 98 workouts for you to choose from. So there's some interesting ones such as mountaineering and kettlebell. It's kind of like the first time that I'm seeing a Suunto sports watch. So it's really interesting for me to check out all these features even though I don't really use them in real life. Now swiping up to the watch screen, you get access to your fitness features such as navigation, logbook to check out your history workout. So I've done kettlebell this morning. I've done pool swimming like in the past week or so. And you can just tap inside and look at all your fitness metrics. It's all very detailed on the watch itself. You don't really even need to run yet. But of course, if you want more detailed analytics, you would have to run the Suunto app on your phone to find out how well you have been training, all right? Now you have other controls right here. You even have media controls controls but one thing that's unfortunate is that it doesn't come with a built-in memory that you can store track spread inside so it's basically just for you to control music on your phone which is something that I find it to be pretty standard on any sports watches but it would, it would be really great if they kind of included some small memory inside so that I can load songs inside so there's timer alarms and some of the features such as uh, turning on and off the backlighting and a do not disturb mode which I have enabled right now because there's a ton of notifications coming in so that I will not be disturbed at all and you can also change your watch face right here. Uh, the watch offers like I believe about nine watch faces for you to choose from which I think is kind of sufficient for most people over there depending on what kind of styles that you really want but it's just unfortunate that you do not get any additional watch faces right here or even customized ones from the app store but yeah I believe most people who uses this watch probably don't care about some additional smart watches out there you can even choose different colors right here and by the way yeah this is a color display by the way it's a matrix TFT display that's uh, pretty good it's very visible outdoors and I really love uh, how it actually looks like when it is in outdoors right now swiping over to the right here reveals the media controls and it's basically just a repeat of this widgets here because you can like swipe back to the main watch face and swipe left again to go to some other widgets here and this is the heart rate monitor blood oxygen and this is how the notifications look like on your Suunto Pick 9 Pro. So you can basically just go inside and take a look at some messages sent by your friends and so on. But unfortunately, uh, if you are paired to an iOS device, you cannot reply uh, any canned messages right here. That's only supported on Android devices. So right here, you're pretty much just stuck to seeing what's happening on your phone, but you still got to take out your phone to do uh, the necessary actions that you want to do. And also, um, the notifications does not support emojis. So that's kind of like a, mm, you know, it's kind of dated, like it's, it's 2023, man. You, you, you got to just support some simple stuff such as emojis right here, but it still doesn't support showing up on the notifications. 
So this is the Sunto app and I really love how the interface looks like. So as you can see, I am in the progress of keeping fit right now, which is really good. And if you're kind of like a fitness nerd, I believe you will definitely love all these metrics out here. So personally, I have to admit that while wearing this watch for a month, I have not been super active because I was so busy with my schedule with work and the holidays are in. I don't really even have time to rest, which is the reason why you're seeing so little metrics right here. But still, I'm just gonna show you some of the features that the app offers. Now, for instance, this morning I did a kettlebell workout. So if we head on inside, you'll be able to see some metrics right here, like your average heart rate, duration, calories loss, and I can even uh, set my feeling where I'm feeling great after doing that really, really fast kettlebell workout. And you can even see like your heart rate zones, how much it has been fluctuating over the period of the workout. There's even a temperature sensor. Well, this watch actually senses temperature as well. And there's even laps right at the bottom here. Now, what I really love about uh, the app here is that you can kind of understand what you have been doing in the past at this calendar uh, section right here. You can see how well you've been doing previously, including your sleep and so on. So I wear this a lot to sleep, so it tracks my sleep all the time. And this is the metrics that you're getting. It's pretty simple and straightforward, though it's not as detailed as I would like to see uh, as compared to uh, other fitness watches such as Fitbits and so on. But they are definitely sufficient and very, very easy to read. Now, um, let's head on to this uh, trends section. So this is what you are able to see uh, on your trends. What is your progress, your training and so on. Now this is all very, very detailed metrics, which is something that uh, I, I guess an average user probably wouldn't know what it is. But for those who really love uh, to do fitness and you do a lot of workouts, you will definitely appreciate uh, this feature here. So I can even like filter uh, what kind of sports that I've been doing in the past. So I did a lot of pool swimming last month. So if I happen to tap on this pool swimming, so it will actually show me like uh, three sessions, four of four sessions that I did in the past two months. So let's head on over to it and see how it actually looks like. So let's say if I pick my uh, December 30th session, yep. It shows pretty much the same metrics that you have seen uh, just now on the kettlebell workout. It's just that you get a lot more because you get like strokes and soft and all this kind of uh, uh, metrics right on the app here. You can see heart rate zones, the pace that I've been doing, and of course the laps that I've been swimming on the swimming pool. So what's super cool right here is that you can replay your workouts right here. So this is the swimming part and I'm going to show you how the walking replay looks like and it looks really cool, I guarantee you. This is probably the coolest thing that I've ever seen on a fitness watch. So I'm going to just filter it to walking right now. So I've done a, a walking workout. So let me just hit on to this play button here. And as you can see, it will show me like a virtual map of how I have been walking in my housing area because this is... Uh, where I actually walk my dog. So you can see that it's this very simple round and it looks really cool. It's in the 3D maps that is something that I have never seen before on a fitness watch, but only the Sunto Pick 9 Pro offers. All right, so now we are going to do a running test on both the Apple Watch Series 6 and the Sunto Pick 9 Pro. Now notice that the Apple Watch screen is definitely way brighter outdoors as compared to the Sunto Pick 9 Pros, but then this is still a very readable display by all means, all right? So let's just head on over to the workout right here. So as, as soon as I launched the uh, running workout on the Sunto Pick 9 Pro, it shows me this uh, set of configurations that I can do. So I can uh, set whether I want the battery mode to be a performance battery mode and if I want to have the GPS turn on. So it's turned on right now but as compared to the Apple Watch Series 6, if I just tap on outdoor run, it basically starts to work out immediately in just three seconds. So I'm just going to press on the start on the Sunto Pick 9 Pro here to show you guys the interface. So this is how two of their interface compares. So the Apple Watch basically lets you swipe across here and there to get the media controls as, as well on the, on the left side right here to either lock the digital crown or just to end your workout. As compared to the Sunto Pick 9 Pro here, uh, you can actually just press the middle button to go to the next part to show you the number of laps that you have ran and you just press again to get to GPS navigation, which is not available on the Apple Watch right here, as you can see. And if you were to press again, you get to the media control. So obviously, if you were to see which one is the better running watch, I would have to say the Sunto Pick 9 Pro definitely has the advantage right here. So uh, this is also the heart rate intensity here. So it will tell you that whether you are in the cardio zone or whatsoever. But right now, we're just going to run two laps across here and we are going to find out how they compare when it comes to the workout results. Let's run.
All right, so I have not stopped the workout on two of these devices so that you can see the metrics that it does track. So in terms of time, uh, of course, the Sunto Peak 9 Pro has a shorter time because I started it later as compared to the Apple Watch. But then in terms of distance, the Peak 9 Pro uh, covers way more, 0.44 kilometers to be exact, which I personally think is way more accurate than the Apple Watch Series 6 based on the distance that I've ran. So yeah, um, this is the difference that both watches are on, even though they are connected to the GPS. But yeah, the Peak 9 Pro actually tracks more accurately as compared to the Apple Watch Series 6. So in order to end the workout, so on the Apple Watch, we got to swipe to the right here and tap on end. And we are done here. And for the Suntool Peak 9 Pro, press on the down button. And that's all, you've got a lap here. And when you're done, just press end and you're pretty much done. Just press on excellent. I actually feel good after that short run. It's because it's been a while since I've done this kind of workout. So yeah, it takes a while to save over to the watch and it synchronizes back to your phone. So these are the results of two of these watches when it comes to a workout. So you can see that the Suntool Peak 9 Pro actually has a lot more metrics as compared to the Apple Watch Series 6 because what you get right here is just all this. And I, I guess it's pretty much the same, but it's just that you can see that the Suntool Peak 9 Pro basically shows a little bit more metrics and the text is actually way bigger, as you can see right here. You can even see the intensity zones and calories, recovery time, and all this information, which the Apple Watch Series 6 doesn't have. In terms of battery life, the Suntool Peak 9 Pro will easily last you more than a week if you are a regular gym goer that uses this watch to track your fitness and all that. But if you're someone that usually works out at outdoors a lot and uses a lot of the GPS, Suntool claims that you can still get up to 40 hours of battery life on a single charge if you are using the best GPS performance mode. Now, if you are someone that is not as active just like me, I actually charge the watch every two weeks and this is probably the best battery life that i have ever experienced on a sports watch so since the watch has such a good battery life there are times that i forget to charge the watch when it hits single digit battery levels but thankfully there is fast charging on this watch and from single digit levels back to 80 percent it merely takes about an hour which is actually really really fast for a sports watch this is how the charger looks like it is a typical charging plug it holds on to it magnetically and it's really easy to just attach it to it there's no need to fumble around on how you attach to it and this is probably one of the best chargers that I have seen on a sports watch. But if I were to nitpick, it would be its cable length. This is actually a pretty short cable. It's probably just about 0.5 meters. So if you have a charger on the floor and you want to just charge your watch, this is going to be a problem. So make sure you use a desktop charger to charge the Suntour Peak 9 Pro. The Suntour Peak 9 Pro retails from 2,699 ringgit for the all black stainless steel model. And if you were to pick up the titanium model, it would cost you an extra 500 ringgit, which I totally suggest that you just go for it since you are already spending that much on a sports watch. So you might be asking me ultimately, is it worth buying the Suntour Peak 9 Pro? Is it worth spending 3,000 ringgit on a sports watch that doesn't look as fancy as an Apple Watch or any other cheaper fitness smartwatches? Well, my answer to this is that it really depends on you because um, if you're someone that really likes to track a lot of metrics regarding your workouts and if you want to do some serious workouts and so on, the Sunto Peak 9 Pro really delivers very, very good metrics that I believe any fitness nerds would really, really love. On top of that, it has great GPS performance and a 21-day battery life that's hard to find on cheaper smartwatches and sports watches. So yeah, that summarizes my review of the Suntour Peak 9 Pro. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and be sure to stay subscribed to the channel for more videos coming right up. And I'll see you guys in the next one.